Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Gary Blackwood. Welcome back to the vlog. This is the last session of my LA trip. I'm so sad as I head to the casino here. I'm also really, really late today, so let's not mess around. Let's get straight into the action. First hand of the day comes 30 minutes into the session. I'm in the double straddle with King 8 offsuit. Double straddling because it's my last session. Let's gamble a little bit. It's going to fold all the way around to the $20 straddle who's going to raise it on up to $100. And I decide to defend. Heads up to our first flop of the day here. It comes down King 5 deuce with two spades. My opponent is going to see bet for $80. And I, of course, make the call. The turn is the Queen of Clubs. Double flush draw on board now. And my opponent bets again this time for $275. Don't love it. But, of course, lots and lots of draws out there and we've got top pair so i go ahead and make the call the river's another queen and my opponent checks it on over to me i think this would be too thin to bet for value when we think about it what worse hands can call us here so i just check it on back my opponent turns over ace nine off suit turning his ace high into a bluff on the flop in the turn and my top pair is going to win this pot up 420 dollars after this hand and next up we've got king 10 suited on the button no straddle for this hand the cutoff raises to 30 dollars i'm going to make the call on the button you can definitely re-raise this hand you can just call it both options are fine and the big blind is gonna come along as well we go three ways to the flop it is 10 10 deuce rainbow three of a kind here really nice start the cutoff is going to see bet for $45, and I'm not going to mess around here. I decide to just go ahead and raise. I make it $145 to go, and the big blind cold three bet jams for $550. Love to see that. Praying the cutoff doesn't fold, but he does just let his hand go. I, of course, make the call with my three of a kind, picking up the camera and zooming in just in time to see the run outs. A lovely king on the river to give me a full house as well. My opponent's actually got the same hand. And we're going to chop this one up. A little disappointing when we've got such a great flop and such a great run out as well. But alas, we just chop it on up. No luck with that king 10. How about this king 10 around 40 minutes later? Under the gun is going to limp in for $10. The button raises it on up to $50. The big blind is a local pro. He makes the call. And then under the gun who limped in lets out a big sigh and raises to $200. The table is laughing at this because it's obviously very strong, especially with the big sigh. I want to crack this guy's pocket aces really, really badly here, so I make a bit of a loose call. The big blind jokingly lets out a big sigh and calls as well to the delight of the table. The flop comes down queen 8-3 with two hearts, one diamond, not what we were looking for at all. Under the gun, he bets for $100. Both of us just fold. I ask him, do you have pocket aces? He shows the camera. He's got me dominated pre-flop. He's got pocket kings. Safe flop for him there. No luck for me. Right, let's move on now. I've got queen 10 offsuit in the straddle. The button is going to call for $20. The middle blind is going to call. The big blind calls as well. And I decide to just check. Can definitely raise this hand, but I decide to just check it this time. We go four ways to the flop. It is 10, 8, 6 with a flush draw. Top pair again for me here. It does just check all the way around. And we see the deuce of clubs, which completes the flush roll off on the turn the big blind is going to bet out for 50 dollars, and i go for some thin value here i raise it on up to 225 dollars kind of reading into his sizing tell a little bit here he's going to make the call and the river is an all suit five my opponent checks to me i announce that i've got top pair i show my hand and sure enough my read was on point because i'm going to win this hand my opponent mucks his cards and all of a sudden, I'm up $580 for the day. Really smooth day so far. Let's keep it going. Next up, I've got Ace-8 offsuit in the big blind. The button is raised to $30, and I defend. We go heads up to the flop. It is Ace-9-3 with two spades. I checked my opponent, and he just checks it on back. The turn is an offsuit 6, and I decide to go for some value here with my top pair. I actually overbet the turn here. I bet $85. And after a few seconds, my opponent makes the call. The river is a seven. It completes a bunch of straights, but I block those straights. And I don't think my opponent has a straight here very often at all. I decide to go for some value. I know my opponent thinks I'm a bit of a maniac. And he does like to call me down light. So I bet out for $150. And my opponent makes the call. I turn over my cards. I show my top pair. He actually shows me an ace as he mucks. He clearly had a very low kicker, which makes sense as to why he wants to check back the flop. It's been a very smooth day so far for me today. Up $800 and hoping to kick on and have a really big day in my final day here. Next up, I've got 9-8 of hearts in the straddle. Feels like I'm the only one straddling today. 
but that's okay. Like I say, it's my last day. The hijack is raised to $60. The button makes the call. The big blind makes the call. And I, of course, call with my very pretty 9-8 suited out the straddle. The flop comes down 7-7-6 seven, seven, with two hearts and one diamond. I've got an open-ended straight flush draw here. The hijack is going to see bet for $75. This looks pretty strong on a board that's not great for him into three other players. It's going to fold all the way around to me. You can definitely raise here. You can't do anything wrong with an open-ended straight flush draw apart from fold, of course. That would be the wrong play. But I decide to just call this time. Like I say, he looks pretty strong when he decides to see bet into so many people. The turn is a very annoying all suit deuce. I checked my opponent and he just checks it on back. The river is a semi straight completing four. I've got eight, five and five, three in my range. And I've got nine high in my holdings. So I decide to take a stab here on the river, try and bluff my way out of this hand. I bet out for $230. My opponent doesn't snap call. He doesn't snap fold either. He thinks for about 30 seconds or so before eventually making the call. I say, you're good. I've got nine high. I turn over my hand. My opponent turns over ace eight offsuit. This is absolute wreckage. He has called the river with just eight high, blocking a lot of my bluffs as well. Do you know what? Nice hand, buddy. There's not much else I can say. Really, really nice hand. He's totally wrecked me here. And this is the first kind of misstep for me today. Losing my first real pot of the day. But hey, let's keep it going here. Next up, I've got four deuce offsuit in the big blind. There have been three limp straddlers on this hand. So they're limping in for $20. I decided to call out the big blind because it's $10 more. And I want to see a cheap flop. The straddler is going to check his option. And it comes down six five three. That's what I'm talking about here. Well worth the extra $10. Small blind is going to lead out for $50. And I'm going to immediately raise my hand. I make it a very healthy $275 to go. My opponent is going to make the call. We see the Queen of Hearts roll off on the turn. And I keep barreling here. I bet $500. My opponent again makes the call. To the river. Keep it clean, dealer. How about that? It's an all suit 10. Nothing changes. If I was good before, I'm good now. What's more, my opponent now leads out. He bets out for $500. This is music to my ears. If he's got me beat, then do you know what? Nice hand. I move all in for $400 on top of the $500. And my opponent snap folds. He was clearly bluffing. Missed one of his draws. Tried to win the pot with a stab on the river. But unfortunately for him, I had the straight. And my opponent just lets his hand go. I'm now at $1,455 for the day. Really smooth day on my last day here. Can we kick on and win a really, really big amount of money to take back to the UK? Let's find out. Next up, I've got ace-queen offsuit on the button. Middle position limps, cut off limps, and I put the price of poker up to $140. Middle position is going to make the call. The cutoff gets out the way. We go heads up to the flop. It is king 7 5 with two hearts. My opponent checks to me. Decent enough flop for my range. We can definitely go ahead and see back here, but I decide to just check it on back this time. Play it a little safe. The turn is an offsuit queen. Really nice turn to give me a pair. My opponent bets out for a measly $100. Really small pro bet from him here. I, of course, make the call. The river's an also deuce. Nothing changes. He checks to me, and I decide to go for some value here with second pair. It's kind of unlikely he's got me beat here after he bet so small on the turn and then checks to me on the river. I bet $300, and my opponent is going to make the call. I turn over my hand, and he can't beat it. Thin value accomplished here. My opponent can't beat my second pair top kicker, and I am scooping in another pot today. It feels like I'm winning almost every pot that I play. Let's keep this going here. Next up, I've got Queen 10 offsuit in the straddle. An older player is going to limp in from middle position. The button calls, and I'm a bit weary of the limper here, so I decide to just check. We go three ways to the flop. It is 10-10-5. Another really nice flop for me here. Middle position is going to bet for $40. The button calls, and I raise it on up. Again, fast playing my three of a kind. I make it $150 to go. Middle position makes the call. The button lets it go. And the turn is the four of spades bringing a flush draw. I bet out for $300. Just trying to milk this older guy. Hopefully he's limped in with aces or something like that. Again, my opponent is going to make the call. He's not going anywhere just yet. The river is the nine of spades. And he's got about $800 or so left in his stack. I think my hand is definitely strong enough to play for it all. So I move all in for around $800. And after about 15 seconds or so, my opponent makes the call. I show my hand, and as you can tell by the reaction on your screen right now, he's not happy. He throws his chips in, he throws his cards. 
He gets up, tells the dealer about how bad she is, and then storms off in a huff. After he leaves, I say, look, I think you're a great dealer, and I tip her $10 for her troubles. I get tip shamed a lot on YouTube, but hopefully this $10 is going to satisfy the angry mob that comes my way from time to time. But anyway, let's move on. All right, next up, we've got a PLO double board bomb pot hand. Going to whiz through it real quick here. I've got 8, 7, 4, 3, and these are the two boards. We're also going to get in 2.2k on the flop somehow versus a very splashy player looking really good on one board. Maybe we can find a way to win the second one. Let's play the clip. Do you want to show? Should we show our cards? I got seven three and a pair of fours. Full house? Oh, full house. Wow. <laughs> oh no! He's... Wow. Oh, come on. Unbelievable. Really, really unfortunate there. I was up $3,450 before this hand, but this plus a couple of other hands not going my way. All of a sudden, we're only up $1,700 or so for the day. But let's finish strong. Let's play as well as we can and see if we can get back up to peak before we finish. Next up, I've got seven five of clubs in the big blind. Middle position is going to raise it on up. The cutoff makes the call. The button calls, and I call last to act out the big blinds. We go four ways to the flop. It is king, seven, deuce, rainbow. I've got second pair, backdoor flush draw, middle position bets out for $100, it folds round to me, and I of course make the call. The turn is the nine of clubs, I now pick up that flush draw, and my opponent bets again, he bets out for $300, he only leaves himself about $400 behind, so I've got a very easy plan here. I make the call, we see the river, it's an also 10, not what I was looking for, I checked my opponent, he announces king queen. And yep, sure enough, King Queen is good enough to beat my pair of sevens and he drags in this pot. Another step in the wrong direction, but that's surely gonna change. I look down at Ace King at the very end of the night. This is the second last hand I'm gonna play of the trip. Let's see if we can make it a winner. I'm gonna raise under the gun plus one to $50. Straddle is on for this hand. The player to my left is gonna make it $150. Falls round to the small blind, he's going to cold call. The big blind is going to cold call as well. And I am salivating as I get to put in a very large four bet here. I make it $650 to go. The original three better size folds his hand. The small blind makes the call. The big blind gets out of the way. We go heads up to the flop with quite a lot of money in there. It comes down jack 5-5 five, five with two clubs. My opponent checks it on over to me. I don't really know what to do here. I don't know what kind of cards he's going to have. So I decide to just check it on back. The turn is a 10 to give me a gutter. And my opponent bets out for $400. I've got a gut shot. I've got two over cards to the board. I might even have the best hand. This player is a bit of a loose goose. So I go ahead and make the call. Getting a pretty good price here. The river is the seven of clubs. My opponent checks it on over to me. And I just check it back. Now, I am going to lose this hand, but you would never guess what I'm going to lose to in a million years. My opponent's got 10-4 offsuit for the classic cold call the three bet and then call the four bet. It's been a really great day. The game has been really good, super gambling and stuff like that, but a little disappointing that we couldn't either get there on the river or just hold ourselves. I should have just see bet the flop. It's my own fault. This is the last hand I'm going to play of my three-month trip here. It's been an incredible trip. I've made some money. I've grown my channel, and I've had a great time as well. I am so excited to go back to LA on the 16th of September 2024 just for a couple of weeks, but that content train is coming back around real soon, so be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss any of the upcoming vlogs from that trip. Thanks as always for watching. My name's Gazzy B. Take it easy.